All right, guys, now that we've successfully rendered a static to-do out under the screen, what we're going to do next is we're going to actually render all of our to-dos out under the screen from our Postgres database. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our package.json. Now, the reason that we're going to do this first is because the way that Create React App and Node work differently is that they both run on different servers, right? So if we're going to make an API request to localhost 8000 slash API slash to-do, but we're running on port 3000, how are we going to deal with that? Well, we have this thing in the package.json that we can use, and it's called proxy. So we're going to go into our client package.json. Do note that we have two different package.json's right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new key. It's going to be proxy. It's going to be an object. And then we're going to have the route, so we're slash API slash. And then we're going to delegate that request with a target of HTTP colon slash slash local host 8000. I'm going to make sure to add this comma here. So what this is going to do is going to say, hey, if we hit anything with the slash API slash, hit up local host. Now it only does this whenever we're running the React server. So in production, we don't run a React server. There's not two separate servers, one for our API and one for our front end. You're just going to serve up the assets that we need from our Create React application. So what, what's happened here is this says, hey, in this folder, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up running in PM run build, and it's going to create a folder for us. It'll say, hey, these are the newly built JavaScript files. Serve those up with this web page, and then let that handle all of the navigation and everything. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. So what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, I've served you. That's all I care about. That's what our node server is going to do. And then React is going to take the rest of it. But that's not running a separate server. It's still all running on the same server. This says, hey, if I'm running on a React server in dev, anything that goes to API should go to localhost 8000. Simple enough. So now that we've done that, we're going to need to install a library that will allow us, that will allow us to actually make those requests in my favorite one is Axios. So do npm install dash dash save Axios. So what Axios is going to allow us to do is make our request up to our server. So we're going to go into our component. We're going to go into our items body because this is where we're going to do it. And we're going to add a constructor. So with any constructor, we're going to need to take in an argument of props and send in a super of props. Simple enough. And this dot set state and that we're gonna to need to have loading is true and to do's is an empty object. So the reason we set our loading to true is because this is gonna be an asynchronous action. We're gonna make the request and then just keep on keeping on, you know? So we're gonna say, hey, as long as we're loading, don't actually try and show our list items because what's gonna happen is, is they're gonna be null and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is instead of just returning list items, we're gonna say if this dot state dot loading is true return an h1 of loading dot 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 so if we're loading go ahead and return a loading dot 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 otherwise we're going to return our list items so if we refresh our page now oh not this dot set state i apologize this dot state is equal to so this is the only time you should ever set state we haven't really talked about state much here, but, but state is the interior state of your component. What it's going to say is, hey, this is what the state is going to start as. And anytime we update the state from this point on, we will use this.set state. Hopefully that makes enough sense. We'll get a little bit into it in just a second. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to say component will or did mount. I apologize. Oof, I can't type today component did mount what this says is, is hey our component is successfully mounted onto the page and we are good to go we're going to say oh we're going to need to import our new library import axios from axios and i need to make sure to spell axios correctly and we're going to say axios.get slash api slash to do and then we're going to say dot then response 
And we're just going to console.log our response, okay? Trust me. So we're going to go back to our Google Chrome. Obviously, we're still sitting at loading because we never set our loading equal to false. But we have an issue here. Ah, localhost of status 400. Well, the reason that is is because we haven't restarted our server. Anytime you edit the packets.json, restart that server. Oh. Created the proxy and started the development server. So as you can see, we got our data back. So let's see what data has. Look at that. It's our two it's our two to-dos. How cool is that? Very simple development environment, and I love proxy for React. So now that we've done this, we actually want to do this.set state. We're gonna say loading is false. And the to-dos is response.data. So now if we reload the page. We see the loading for just a hair of a second, and then we load up our stuff. Now, I don't know if this is bothering you as much as it's bothering me, but the fact that this list item is right on top of this really bothers me. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna update our top nav, and we're gonna put MB-1. And as you can see, they add a little margin. Now, this is a Bootstrap 4 thing, this is not in Bootstrap 3, if you've seen some Bootstrap 3 before. So Bootstrap 4 follows kind of a different idea in that everything should be done through classes. So as opposed to adding a style onto a specific thing, you should make a class, and that's what they've done. They said margin bottom of 4. And then we've added the margin bottom of 4. Pretty cool. So now that we've rendered our hello onto the screen, we're going to actually want to render our items out onto the screen. Now I'm going to use Lodash for this. I don't think that we've installed it yet, but in case if we have, don't worry about it. But we're going to do npm install dash dash save Axios. Or not Axios. We already installed Axios. Lodash. So we're going to npm install dash dash Lodash or dash dash save Lodash. I'll get it right eventually. So Lodash is a bunch of helper JavaScript functions that will allow us to easily do what we are about to, or complete what we want. It really looks a lot nicer than some JavaScript. It has some regular vanilla JavaScript built in like map, but it also has the ability to see if an object is empty, uh, reject like specific things in, a, in an uh, array or an object. It's very, very powerful and I'm a big fan of it. So we're gonna import underscore from Lodash. Now the reason that it's import underscore is because this is branched basically from a library called underscore. It has the word low dash, you know, what is an underscore if it's not a low dash? It's a dash that's low. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't. It's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function. And we're going to say this. It's going to be below render. And we're going to say render to do's. And we're going to say return underscore dot map this.state.todos. What we're saying is we're going to map our to-dos to something new. And we're going to have, and for each to-do, so that's what's going to be here. We'll, we'll do this. We're going to say for every to-do, so what we're saying is we're going to map all these to-dos, and this is the function that we're going to end up doing. We're going to return a list item, and we're going to need to put some data on there. So we're going to want to put our actual, do we want to put our whole to-do? I don't think so. We're going to say the title of it is equal to do dot title. And then the is done is going to be to do dot. I don't remember what I named the to do. Oh, man. So we're going to look at our API, and it is underscore done. So that's how we send it down. So now that we've done that, so if you don't understand what we've done, we've turned our array into an array of list items. That's all we've done. Next up is going to be actually rendering that under the screen. So we're going to do this dot render to do's. And we're going to see how that bad boy loads up. And as you can see, we have two list items. So instead of text, what we're going to do is we're going to take in title and is done. And we're going to render those onto the screen. So we're going to say title. And we're going to do a space. And we're going to do is done, question mark, 
done. Otherwise, we're going to say not done. So if we go back to our screen, so if we go back to our screen, we say third test, not done. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So now that we've successfully rendered those onto the screen, in our next video, we're going to actually finish up all the requests. We're going to do delete, post, and put all in one go. It's only going to be one more screen. We're going to do all the editing and all the deleting in one screen. So that way we'll cover all of our endpoints. We'll do a get by ID, a get all, a put for an edit, a post for a new one, and a delete. And that's going to be all of our endpoints. And then after that, we're going to hopefully make a new video about how to deploy it to Heroku. So these videos are going to hopefully come out after the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. If you're watching this not during that time, that's why there's going to be a lag between the videos. Um, I've also been having some problems with my wrists, so I've been trying not to make too or do too much typing. But I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I hope you guys enjoy the series. Thank you for watching.